Hi! Welcome to Base Editing with Daisy. Today I wanted to take another look at base editing commands. I want to show you how to set up your editor so that things are easier for you. I want to show you what commands you need to manipulate items to get the effects that you want. And I want to show you a few things about the base entry portal and how to place it and some commands that you might need when you have placed it outside of your base entry room. So let's start with the keys that you use to set up your base editor. And these are F1, F2, and F3. F1 is your grid size. Essentially your grid size is just how far apart items are placed. You see this jumping from place to place. That's your grid, essentially. And I'm going to turn this with my right click, place it there, get another table, and I'll show you. Um, I can't place these tables any closer th than that. They jump together unless no, that's as far as I can place it. So when you're trying to manipulate an item, the grid really helps you or hurts you in your placement because if I'm trying to place an item, it's only going to go in a certain position on this grid. So if, for instance, I want to put these tables exactly together but not have them overlap and have them line up perfectly, I would set it to grid one quarter because that's a great setting when you're trying to put lots of objects in a row and have them be right next to each other but still all lined up and everything. Now if I want to make some very precise placements I'm going to turn the grid off and that's what I usually do actually when I'm placing items so they go exactly where I want them to and um, I don't have to deal with where the editor is going to put it automatically. The next key is angle snap and the first time I looked at this I'm like what is angle snap and why would I ever need it? Well angle snap is essentially just how far an item rotates as you turn it or you angle it and position it. It's really good for if you are um, wanting to turn something over and have it be on the other side. Uh, you can see immediately when that is in its proper position and not slightly off. I mean the next angle out is very very obviously not vertical or not horizontal. So that makes that easier. But also this is great if you want to say angle an object and angle a lot of objects all the same way or you have a certain design that you want and they need each thing needs to be like uh, 30 degrees to the other things to make a circle or what whatever you're doing, you can do it with the angle snap editor so that you can get things precisely lined up. Um, the third key, F3, is just room clipping. Now room clipping simply means that if it's enabled I can put things outside of the lines of the base, or outside of the confines of the base, up or down, or even into the wall a little bit. Now if I put something in the wall, um, I can't put it all the way out because things have to be within the base parameters, whether you're above the base or below the base, it's whatever the room is, some things can't go out of being technically in that room. This is a still attached to the floor, so that's as far as that item is going to go. You're going to always have at least part of the item in the room when you're moving it. Okay, another really important key is your F5 key, and this is just item attachment, okay? Uh, there are four different attachments and you can see three of them items come out of the editor with a, a built-in attachment. For instance, in light fixtures this is a large accent lamp and it will always come out oriented to be on the floor. This is a wall torch, it will always come out oriented to stay on the wall. And this is a light column and it is always going to be oriented to stay on the ceiling. However, I can change these orientations however I like. If I would like this instead to be on the wall and sticking out, I can attach it to the surface. If I want it to be on the floor and sticking up, I can put it there because the attachment point is the, the base of this light column. So whichever attachment I have it on, that's what's going to attach to the, like this is attached to the floor, and so it's pointing up. <coughs> now if you use the wall attachment, the item will just go to the wall in the orientation where it usually comes out of the editor. So um, this usually is pointing down, so when I hook it up to the wall, it's pointing down. Now if I were to make this attached to the wall, I can just stick it on the wall and it is upright because it comes out of the editor upright. So those are just a few little 
um, quirks. So then you have your um, keys that manipulate objects, and these would be Shift, Control, and Alt. And Shift is just going to, if you hold Shift down and move your mouse, it's just going to make things move up and down. Control, if I have something at the height I want it, and I hold control, which I usually do when I'm grabbing an object, I hold control just so that if it goes scooting off somewhere, I can get it back by looking down and bringing my mouse in view of the camera. But I can just keep this, it'll keep it on the same level all day long as long as I'm holding control. The second I let go of the control, it goes right to the next floor or whatever orientation it has. Um, and then there's Alt, which turns an object side to side. Now when I use these keys in combination, I get two different axes. I get Control Alt, and this is going to turn it on um, the other next axis. And um, even if I change how this item is oriented, that's still how the item moves. And if I hold Alt, it's still going to go side to side, even though it's facing in a different direction. Then the third orientate, the third axis is controlled by Shift Alt. Hold that down, and you can see it's going to go a totally different axis. This one is side to side for this particular item. So that's basically how you manipulate things. Now you can put things together to form other objects. That's one of the very creative things about the editor. So I'm going to just going to demonstrate, showing you this is an explosive rune, and it usually comes out on the floor. So if I want to get it on the table, what I'm going to do is uh, I can either shift till it's at the right height and put it on the table, or I can change its attachment to surface. And again, I'm holding control so that even if I go off the table and onto the floor, since they're both perpendicular to both perfectly at the you know <laughs> horizontal axis. Uh, it doesn't matter which surface I go over, but if I was mousing over, say, the side or this bathroom wall, you can see the whole explosive rune has, rune has changed. It's echoing the surface that you're mousing over. So most things I want to move them on the surface or the floor attachment so they don't bounce all over the place. I'm going to turn my grid off because what I want is to be able to precisely move this next item. This is a candle, and um, what I'm going to want to do is put it in the middle of that item. And I'm going to go ahead and make the candle blue also. Some items can be colored, so the middle of the rune is colored blue. I want to color the candle blue, and then when I hold control, it's still not quite high enough, so I'm going to shift it up grab the wrong thing. That happens sometimes. Um, when you make a mistake, Control Z is the other key you're going to really love. I know I love it um, because it'll undo what you just did. And okay, so now I'm raising the candle up. And now I'm going to place it in the middle of my explosive rune, which looks to have gotten off the table somehow. I'm going to sink that down. There. So now I've made a little centerpiece for my table. And like I said, you can meld objects together and it's a really uh, creative way to use the editor. And it's really fun to go into other people's bases and see what things they have combined to make what objects. Now, about the base entry portal. When you start out editing, you have a base entry room and the entrance room cannot be deleted. But sometimes you don't want to use the entrance room. You don't even want it to attach through a doorway to your big room. You just want the entry room to be somewhere else. So you can just grab this thing and it'll go anywhere there's a floor. Just set it down, no problems. Now, if you are working outside of the base, you're going to want to put it somewhere else. Again, the top of the base counts as a floor. So if I were making the base, um, I was filling in the base so I could work on top of it. You could just do this and you can do it by either clicking on the box or you can just raise it with your mouse, just pull and grab up. Does not work in reverse, but it works to pull it up and then you can just apply that to the room. And now you'd have a nice place to place your base. 
Um, sometimes you can place the base on something that's not a floor, but you might run into an error where people get stuck in the base editor, uh, in the base, sorry, entry, when you come into the base and typing slash stuck does not help you in this instance. So what you do is the same command that you'll use whenever, if I were to place the base portal here, when I come into the base, I'll be here and I won't get the prompt that I get when I'm uh, when I come into the base entrance room, because there, there's a nice little window that says edit base or upgrade plot. Um, I can still go back to that room and get that window, but if I come out of my base, I can't get to that room because it, it's not possible to fly through that top ceiling level, even if it's open. So to get to the base editor, I would type slash and then edit base space one. And when I hit that, when I hit that and click that to enter, then I get into the base editor. And if I want to get to the portal, of course, as I said before, I would type stuck and then I would automatically go to the portal wherever it is. So if you find yourself stuck in the base portal when you come into the base, you're going, and hopefully you have editing privileges, but you're going to have to type edit base slash one to get into the editor. And then once you've done that, um, click on the portal and maybe do a right click and quarter turn it. That's not going to affect how you come out of the portal. It just affects how the portal is sitting. Sometimes that corrects the error. Sometimes you have to move the base portal just a little bit. Sometimes you have to, you know, shift up and make sure it's cleared of any obstructions. Uh, sometimes this is a persistent error and you need to do a few different things before you can get it. But make sure no objects are interfering with the base portal because that can certainly trigger that error. Um, I also wouldn't put it too close to anything else that does teleportation because um, that can mess with the game dynamics also. So I hope that this helped and that you can make a great base with the instructions that I've given you and um, you won't get stuck in your base portal and you'll know what to do if you do. Thanks for listening.